slapped me like, bam, bam. He just kept slapping, bam, bam. I remember that night, uh, I drove. I got in the car, I just drove and drove. I ended up someplace in Kentucky I never heard of. Mm. I'm like, I'm done. I was just gonna drive the car over a bankman. Mm. And God said, no, ain't your time to do that. Just drive back home, I got you. I'm like, Lord, I can't keep going through this. This is, this is not my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go through this no more. So you're being called preacher's wife. Mm -hmm. He's a preacher. Mm -hmm. He's telling you, y'all was supposed to get married. Mm -hmm. It seems like the stars are aligning. Yeah, that's what I thought. I did. Six months later, we're at the Justice of the Peace. Okay, so I wanted to, I've always wanted to have a, 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 a church wedding, mm -hmm. but the, the pastor that I wanted to marry us, did want to marry us in Colleen. He, he wanted to have it in Waco. We, I couldn't afford to have two, mm -hmm. two uh, weddings. So we, we just decided, to, you know what, just forget it. Let's just go ahead and elope. So we mm -hmm. did, we went into Justice of the Peace. And while we were there, the late, I remember there was a, I was a, a lady that was there that was, I guess she was a witness. The Justice of Peace, him and, and I standing before God. Mm. And I remember something said, that ain't the one, don't do it. Uh, I, I felt it, I, I knew it. And I'm, I'm crying, I'm, I mean, I'm boo-hoo crying. I mean, snot crying at this time. Mm. And the lady said, oh, it's okay. You, know, you just love him so much. I'm like, that ain't <laughs> I, I wish she had <laughs> saw something else. Mm. Cause that would have stopped me from marrying him. If she had said, said something, you know, you don't have to do it. Uh, anyway, she didn't. She said, oh, you're just nervous. And I remember, I, to this day, I know it was God telling me, don't do it. That's not the one. But I did it because I didn't want him to be embarrassed, uh, whatever the situation mm. may be. So we got married. Six months after? Six months after I knew him. Mm. Yep. November the 4th, mm. 1985. Mm. Yeah, never forget that. Uh, my three, four months into the marriage, uh, things were going pretty well. Um, my, my mother didn't really like him. I knew that, but you know, she said, "You got to live with him, not me." Mm. She said she just knew something about him, just something about she just always said something about him. Mm. And since she said that, it was my, I was, you know, I had to protect my husband. That's you know, that's my husband. So. When what I'm about to tell you happened, I, I couldn't tell anybody. So we were watching TV that particular day and we had made a vow that um, one day you watch what you want on TV in the bedroom or the other person would go to the living room and watch it, mm. vice versa. But this particular day was my day to watch what I wanted to watch. Mm. And he didn't want to do that. He said, no, I want to watch sports. I'm like, well, go watch sports in the, in the, in the, in the room. other room. Mm -hmm. said, no, you go watch sports. I'm like, that ain't fair. We said, you know, I mm -hmm. did what Ah, uh, next thing I knew, I was hit with like, it's like a Mack truck hit me in my stomach. I remember ball, falling over. And I'm like, oh my God, this man just hit me. I'm like, I've never been hit by a man. My dad whipped me once in my life. Mm. That's all I remember. Mm. And I've never been hit so hard. I said, I can't believe this. this it hit me. I mean, I'm, I'm crying, I'm belting over. I'm like, oh my God. And I started to pick up the phone. I was like, I can't even call my mama. Cause she don't know. You don't feel embarrassed. Embarrassed. And then I didn't want to get my brothers involved. Oh God, this isn't going to happen. And of course, um, and it wasn't, he didn't, he didn't come in right, right away. It was like, he watched what he wanted to watch. Then he finally came in. I remember I went to, I went to sleep on the couch mm -hmm. crying and he woke me up, I'm so sorry, please don't leave me, please don't leave me, I will never do it again. I'm like, but you did it, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wanted to believe that that's the way it was. But that's your husband. That's my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay with it, right? Mm -hmm. It happened again, probably about three months later. And what was the cause of it this time? Uh, money, oh. money issues. Um, he decided that he was going to get out of the, out of the, um, his work, his work. He was going, mm -hmm. he was, he was in, in the military. Mm -hmm. I was only working part time, but he didn't even tell me he was going to quit. So if he had told me we could have better prepared Adjusted, for it. Yeah. So we needed, at that time we needed rent. So we had to go to the pastor, you know, to get mm -hmm. rent money. 
I'm like, this, I don't live like this. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so I was fussing about it. And after I remember too, there was another young lady that was involved that her sister had called me and told me that he had been screwing his, her younger sister. I forgot about that part too. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think it's in the book, I think. <laughs> and I'm like, what? So I, so she told me all this. I didn't know if it was true or not, but I, I go over to the young lady's house and she tells me, yeah, that, you know, that she thought they were going to get married. You know, that he marries you. I'm like, what? This is crazy. So he was dating at the same time. So, of course, I come back home. I'm mad, you know, all in his face, didn't care, you know. And, yeah, that's, I think then as he slapped me, like, bam, bam, just kept slapping, bam, bam. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, my God, this is, I could not believe so I'm like, so I'm, by this time I'm, I'm packing, mm -hmm. like I'm going home, forget it. This, this, this ain't going to work. This is not, I didn't, I didn't, mm. he's I begging. Didn't for I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> he, he didn't care. I mean, of course he's begging, he's crying. He said, oh, I, we'll, we'll, we'll get counsel, I promise it. And just, just cut in my face. It made it my fault. Mm. You know, if you hadn't believed me, I, I told you the truth. If you hadn't believed me, I'm like, I'm like maybe it was my fault. Mm. Then he said, we're going to have to go. We have to move to Ohio because we, we can't afford to live here. Mm. I'm like, I don't want to go to Ohio. What's in Ohio? I, all that I've heard about Ohio was Cincinnati. I ain't mm -hmm. have never heard of Dayton. I'm like, I'm not going. He said, well, Jackie said, we, we go there. My, my family, they'll, they'll help me. You know, they'll help us get on our feet. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's 1,100 miles, 1,108 miles mm. from my mama. Mm. I'm like, I can't go that far from my mama. I remember, I remember, I remember going, <laughs> us leaving, getting here. I said, well, maybe things will be better. And the whole trip there, I cried. I, we had went, went by to, to Waco to say our goodbyes to my mom. She knew we was leaving. My mom was crying. I'm crying. She said, baby, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Maybe you, you start a new life up there. Things will get better. But I knew my mother knew something was up. We get to my mom's. To get, we get to, um, to Dayton. His mother lived in Miamisburg, him, him and his father. Him, his mother and his father lived in, Dayton, in uh, Miamisburg. And things just got worse. Things just got worse and worse and worse. I'm like, oh my God. I remember, uh, I said, well, maybe, you know, if we move into his mom's house, you know, be things, it, you know that'd be there to protect me. Mm -hmm. Nah. I remember hollering, screaming their names. I remember he had, he had me in the closet and was just beating me. I mean, and to this point, I, I ended up with a black eye. Um, they didn't care. They, they just did not care. And I was just so, I said, nobody cares about me. This is crazy. Like, well, what did I do? to deserve this. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, all the time. And I, I befriended a, a good friend. This, this went on for years. I went back, I flew back home mm -hmm. probably six times. I, I drove, I, one time I, I rode a, the RTA, not uh, the Greyhound bus, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just wanted to get away. I remember him putting me on the R, uh, Greyhound bus and say, go, don't come back. But by this time I lost who Jackie was. Mm. I've been beat so many times it, it didn't even, and then he became a pastor that's the worst part <laughs> I thought it was going to stop mm. once he became a pastor mm -hmm. it got worse I, was, I would go, go to church with black eyes and nobody in the church came to my rescue not one you were the first lady first lady first lady playing piano coming to church wearing sunglasses and no one I need my best friend. Do you think people around you... They knew, had to know. So they had to know. There's a, there's, a, there's a thing here, and I hate to say that, but it's the truth, that when pastors do something, they have a, they call it a good old boy connection, that you don't tell nothing. That the wives, it's like, it's, it's like something that's, that's written into, that they don't tell you that, but it's like it's written into our DNA. When you come up a, a, a preacher's wife, especially Baptist. Mm. And I remember going to his pastor, telling his pastor, trying to seek some um, knowledge or what I can mm -hmm. do, you know, some help. Um, went to his pastor and told his pastor what was happening. His pastor didn't like him mm. anyway. And I remember him. Instead of helping. Instead of helping, he preached about it. He told, he stood up in that pulpit, said everything but my name. Everybody knew. Because I had been back and forth home, you know, they, they knew what was going on. They, they weren't nobody stupid. They knew. And that night, I remember going home 
driving in his mother's car. His mother was driving and he was sitting in the passenger side. He said, I'm going to kick your ASS when I get you home. And the mom heard tell, this? Yeah, she heard it. Mm. You don't tell my business? To him, you know he don't like me. I'm like, I'm trying to get some help. That's all I was trying to do, trying to get some help. Said, I'm going to help you, okay? And that night was one of the worst beatings. It was, it was bad. And his mother did nothing. She was there. She was, okay, she was there, her husband was there, and his sister was there. Nothing. Not one thing. I felt like, so I remember getting up that night and because I had been to the doctor so many times and had lied about broken arm, bruises here, bruises there, he stopped hitting me in my face when he became a pa the, pastor's, the pastor. But he would hit every place else mm. that was covered up. Mm. I remember that night, uh, I drove. I got in the car, I just drove and drove. I ended up someplace in Kentucky, never heard of. Mm. I'm like, I'm done. I was just gonna drive the car over a bankment. Mm. And God said, nope, ain't your time to do that. Just drive back home, I got you. I'm like, Lord, I, I can't keep going through this. This is, this is not my life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go through this no more. Hi, so sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Glia Huyel. Glia Huyel is an independent owned company that sells hair line and skin line products. Everything they use in their products and ingredients is 100% organic. You can definitely hit them up and contact them at www.gliahuyel.com. I'll leave the link down below. If you'd like to get anybody or to just have it for an event, you can definitely hit them up and say, hi, I would like to buy a Glia Hiel skin light or hairline product. Now let's go back to the video. And mind you, um, I tried. I tried so many times to, three times to kill myself. The last time I tried was with, um, it was uh, sleeping pills. Pills, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. I think it was over 20 pills that I shouldn't have woke up. When I did, I was mad. I'm like, God, I can't do this right. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I'm like, God, what is it? I'm like, I can't live like this. Mm. That next, I think it was like a week later, mm -hmm. my best friend, her name is Dana Boggs, mm -hmm. who's also a minister of God now. Mm. She said, I'm coming. We had a child then. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking things are going to get a little better with the child. With the the child. We, had our own, we had our own place then. And... He was pastoring, you know, things gonna get better. And eh, things got worse. And we had uh, also adopted um, a young man. Mm -hmm. Well, not really adopted, he just started staying with us. He was mm -hmm. 11 at the time that we, he was 11. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know that he was getting abused too. I had no idea. But when Dana came over and said, I want you to just uh, watch, this watch this movie. I take the kids, just watch the movie, just you. I'm like, watch a movie. I don't watch no movies. I got, I got hell going on. Mm -hmm. I don't even watch no movie. Mm -hmm. And she said, Jackie, just watch the movie. I watched it. She came up, got the kids. I watched that movie, and it was called Enough mm -hmm. with Jennifer, starring Jennifer Lopez. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I guess just watching that movie made me realize that's you. Mm -hmm. The whole time, that's you. That's what you're going through. And Jennifer, Jennifer, Hutt, Jennifer Lopez in the movie started taking kickboxing, started taking karate. So Jackie starts taking kickboxing, started taking karate so I can defend myself. Because mm. I believe that if I defended myself, it wouldn't be so bad. Mm. I did that. I remember when I first started, because he would throw things at my face. I mean, it was... I remember having a whole bottle, 32 ounce of, of Pepsi. And I said something to him that made him off, made him mad. And he would just throw it in my face. And I knew what to do. Okay, so there was some signs that he would say, he was this little, this little phrase that he would say, you're about to piss me off. Mm -hmm. That let me know if I take it any farther, what was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. So I knew. This day, I didn't care. I was tired. And mind you, every cop in Dayton, we lived in Dayton, we lived in Trotwood, we lived in um, um, Centerville, we lived in every, in every place we lived, the cops came by. Mm -hmm. Because 
We didn't call somebody. Our neighbors would call. It was that bad. It was that bad. The last time they came by, we lived in Tip City. And the, the officer there became a friend <laughs> of mine. <laughs> he knew me so much. We became, I mean, we became friends. And he said, you got to let this go. I said, the next time you come by, I'm going to kill him. Because by this time, I'm, I'm fighting him. You know, I'm, I'm fighting him like. You got your cardio. You right. <laughs> I'm fighting him. I mean, I'm hurting him. I mean, he's, he's realizing that I'm there. And, and the, him initiating the, the fight almost, it wasn't as bad as it used to be. But it was still, he was still hit me. And this cop, this cop told me, said, you need to just leave because you just told me that you, if, I, if something was to happen to him, I got to come get you. Mm -hmm. Because you just told me you was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. I said, get you a stun. I said, I ain't trying to stun him. I want him dead. I'm mm -hmm. tired of him. And that was the, probably the last time that we fought. Mm -hmm. Because I stood up and told him, I said, I'm done. He said, you come back to this house, I'm going to kick. I had to go to rehearsal, me and my son. My son was four. You come back to this house, I'm going to kick you. I'm like, okay, you won't get that chance again. I'm done. I had already started packing my son's uh, stuff. I knew I was done. I knew I had moved out of the bedroom. I was getting myself back. Prepared. Prepared, right. And I had, I had gained so much weight, it was ridiculous. I looked like a monster. I look in the mood, and I'm like, good God, you are huge. Mm. I probably gained 90 pounds. When people would, would, would pass me up, they'd say, oh, dang, girl, what, what's wrong with you? So I lost all of me because of him. I lost 80% hearing in my right ear and 60% hearing in my left ear. And I didn't, I, I didn't realize it was that bad. I always started reading lips really well. Oh, I read lips well. It wasn't until I finally moved out and finally... Uh, so I taking care of Jackie that I realized that I had a hearing problem. I'm like, I can't believe this man. I've done everything. This eye, I almost lost this eye. If, without makeup, you can see the, the, the coloration. It's like right in here. It would never heal because I almost had a detached retina because he hit me with the closed fist because I wouldn't put my name on a car for him to drive. But mind you, he didn't have no license. So you preach a man, don't like to pay tickets, don't like to pay bills, and so, and I'm not I'm putting my name on nothing. This is the strong Jackie. The other Jackie would have done that. But when Jackie started getting strong, I know I talked about, talk about myself in third person, but when Jackie started getting stronger, she started taking up for herself a lot more. And that particular day, I did not sign it. I remember coming home and he was driving the car. He got in the, got in the passenger side. I mean, I got in the pass, he got in the driver's side and he pushed my head down to the floor board of the car and he let me back up took my neck and bam 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 mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. that's when this this i almost lost it i almost lost it so it got to the point where yeah. i know you got the strength to leave mm -hmm. and you mentioned to me that you got your own apartment yes. you're with your son life is good yes but uh, one day he was coming over to, I, I think, bring you something or take something. Mm -hmm. And then you went back. Yeah, I was stupid. Um, because I was, I'd never been alone. Mm -hmm. I'd never been, either I'd been with my, my mother coming up, mm -hmm. or my sister, and then married to him. I was young. I mean, he took all of my, I was, I was 40, I was 40 something years old then. Mm -hmm. 41, 42. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't want any other, other man, but... I didn't know it. I didn't want a man at all. But when he started coming by and picking up my son, you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, played basketball, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that particular day, he um, he came in, and one thing led to another. This thing I know, he's back in the house. Mm -hmm. But my son, <laughs> this is the funny part. My son is the one that came to me. He said, "Mama, um, why you let Daddy back in?" Mm -hmm. I'm like, what you mean? I said, you don't want him here? He said, no. I said, we were fine. We had our own place. I had bought my own first, first of anything I bought on my own. Mm -hmm. The condo, you know, I had a nice little condo of my own in, my, in Jackie's name, you know, in my own name and had my own furniture and everything. And I didn't need, I didn't need him. I've always been a workaholic. So I worked two jobs still, plus playing for church. And when he came over, he saw, you know, oh, this is, this is really nice, you know, and, uh, yeah, I let it back in. 
That's what my son told me that. I said, you know what? You got to go. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of you. I, at the first and started back again, mm -hmm. and I knew what was going to happen again. I said, I, I, the next time you do that, I knew it was going to be a mess. Somebody was going to die. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, that Sunday morning I got up and I was playing for a church. I said, when I get back, I want you, better you be gone. Home. Yeah. When I got to church, I had this sick feeling in my stomach. I said, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. I told the preacher, I said, Pastor, I said, I, I'm sorry, I can't stay. I waited till he got up to preach. I'm like, I got to go. Something ain't right. He said, go take care of your business. When I got home, my door was wide open. My garage was wide open. My front door was wide open. I'm like, somebody broke into my house? Oh, my God. I know it was him. I walked in. My furniture's gone. I go upstairs. I'm a, I'm a living, room, living room furniture was gone. Gone. Mm. I had white, um, beautiful white uh, living room set. Mm -hmm. Gone. The pedestals for the, for the flowers, gone. I go upstairs, see if anything gone. Everything in my room is fine. Because I had a real huge TV. Mm -hmm. but you can't you take a hold of me. A lot of mm -hmm. people take it. And so my son went to my son's room. This is what hurt me the most. Is when he took my son's Xbox, took his TV, and took all his games. I'm like, you can hurt me. But not him. He's innocent in this. Why would you take your son? And I called him. I, I said, I know you took it. Nobody else has been in here. Nobody mm -hmm. else had a key. Mm -hmm. And you left my house. Birds and thing go to flew in. I couldn't believe I was so hurt. So I had to take him to court because I let him in. Mm -hmm. I called the cops and they said, well, he had a key. I'm like, this, this is crazy. I take him to court. Yeah, I win. To, I won. To this day, I still have a standing order for him to pay me $300. But I'll never get it. Because he has no money. Hmm. And then, and I'm angry. I'm evil. I'm angry. I didn't care. I was mad at the world. I, I wanted him. Oof. If I if I saw him, if I saw him walking across the street, I probably would have ran over him. Hmm. It was that I hated this man. And I had so much hate in my heart. And I, I, I knew God couldn't use me. I've tried to play for, um, for church and I uh, this is I hated church. I don't want nothing to do with church anymore. Like, I'm tired of, and a preacher, mm -mm, nope, I'm down with that. This, ain't, this is what my life is. And I was just evil. I didn't realize how evil I was until to now, but I was evil. I was very evil. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> speechless is not, it's in, what's the word, understatement? Yeah. I don't know, like, I've heard your story, I've read your book, but it's like, Every time you say, I just, like, how? How is this possible? How can yeah. somebody do this? And, like, the more you speak, I kind of envision in my head, mm -hmm. and it almost seems like a Tyler Perry movie. <laughs> something that's not real, something right. that somebody wrote. Yeah. But your story is more than real. It's yeah. what happened to you, it and it's so evident. Like, it's crazy to me. But yes. through all this, one thing that I really want to highlight on is your healing. Yeah. Um, how was healing? Like, cause you were 16, you had a surgery, you didn't, you, you knew you couldn't have kids. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you gave your life to God. Like yeah. God saved me and you got me. Right. Was a healing process at the age of 16. Mm -hmm. You kind of just went on. Mm -hmm. And then um, you coming back to Waco and then marrying the mm -hmm. preacher and then him doing what he has to do. Was a healing throughout that journey at all? Mm -hmm. No healing. So now we're at the, par at the point that You've left, you find your strength, you and your sons are um, done, you have your core order. Mm -hmm. Still healing, mm -hmm. no healing. When did healing happen for you? Wow. Well, I started back taking care of myself, so I was at a mm -hmm. gym. He had my son's birth certificate, and I needed him to bring it to me. I wasn't coming to him, so I said, I'm at the gym, bring it to me here. Mm -hmm. So when he brought it, <laughs> that's the funny part. When he brought it to me, um, he was in this truck. I looked at it and saw it. I'm like, oh, I was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. This truck, Sanford and Son truck. Yeah, yeah that red right? truck. <laughs> the truck was horrible. Um, he looked like something the cat drug in. He looked so bad. I'm like, I married this? I mean, he looked like God had been whipping him day and night. Mm. And I remember him coming into the gym, handing me the birth certificate and said, okay, saying I had to bring it over here. I didn't have no gas. I'm like, all right, thank you. Mm. And kept going. I'm, I'm on the elliptical or something, mm -hmm. something. And I heard God's voice say, 
go on your purse and get them $20. I'm like, I'm so God, what no. are you talking to? No. Nope. I, I know you ain't <laughs> talking me. to me. I ain't giving this nigga bro nothing. <laughs> and and it, I did that. And people, I know people thought I was crazy because mm -hmm. I'm talking out loud. I said, like, I'm not giving him nothing. Mm -hmm. And he just stood there. Like he was waiting for Waiting that. for me to do it. I'm like, shh. I kept walking. I mean, I kept on whatever I was on. Mm -hmm. And I, God's voice just got clearer and clearer. Give it to him. Give it to him and be done with it. Just give it to him. I reached in my purse, which I normally don't even keep with me while I'm exercising. This particular mm -hmm. day, God, God is, yeah. <laughs> this particular day, I had it sitting on the shelf. You know, the little thing where the numbers are. I reached in my purse and I handed him a $20 bill. When he reached for the $20 bill and he took it, that was when my healing started. God said, I just needed you to trust me. Hmm. Said because he can never hurt you again. I got you. Just by giving, just him by giving to him, because he's the one that hurt you. You're telling him that it's not on you anymore. Not on you anymore. It's on him. Mm. You've asked for, and I did. I'd ask God to forgive me for hating him, but I still hated him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I still, mm -hmm. I hated everything, every fiber of his being. But it wasn't until I gave him that twenty dollar bill. I can't explain it. That's when my healing started. Mm. I'm like. Really, God? You couldn't just tell me to forgive him? Mm. I had to give him some money. Mm -hmm. And mind you, this whole time I haven't gotten out one dime. To this day, have not got one dime of child support from him. Mm. But I've given him $20. That's why I'm really upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, was, there wasn't anything to even right. give back. Or just, you just this is my hard-earned money. I said, yeah. give it to him. Hmm. So, and I think you also mentioned that to this day he is still a pastor. He's still pastoring something. How has <laughs> <laughs> pastoring something? That's right. funny. Right. How has communication been with um, your child's father? And um, my child now is twenty-seven mm. years old. He's he's married. He has four kids of his own, mm. and th well, three kids, but three kids of his own. Mm. And he he came to me when he turned eighteen, and he said, "Mama," he said, "I hate him." I said, mm -mm, "No, you don't." Don't do that. Don't do yourself like that. Nope. I said, you can dislike him. He said, that man has done nothing for me. And I used to get upset because, you know, when the kids were younger, daddy coming, daddy coming, you know, my daddy got bought this, my daddy, you know, he would buy him like a whatever, something small. But he would say, I would never give you money. Mm -hmm. Never put money in my hands. I said, I don't care. School clothes, school uniforms, anything. Mm -hmm. And he never would. So you, you get upset when, when your kid is, is, you know, okay with him. But then you're the one that's doing all the work. Mm. When my child came to me when he turned 18 and realized that he knows, mm. he knows who, who has his has his back, and his father to this day, they they talk but they don't. They're not close like they used to. Mm. Both of them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he's been married another woman, who went out and bought my book. I'm I not... just found it out. <laughs> I'm gonna say no book. comment. <laughs> And she told, she told my son, I know she's not lying because some of the same things have happened to me. Man. So, I don't know. He hasn't learned. At this age? At this age. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's get a little light right <laughs> okay. around here now. Yeah. So, with all that you've been through, with all of this, you tried to commit suicide three times. Mm -hmm. And God was like, mm -mm, not today. Right. If I were you, I would have been pissed too. Like, God, you, <laughs> like, you're not giving me the life I want. Right. Well, then just take me. Exactly. What, what do you want me to do? Exactly. But you kept going. Mm -hmm. Even though you hated him, even mm -hmm. in the dark times, you kept going. You were so yeah. strong, taking care of your kids, yeah. being independent, Jackie. Mm -hmm. When was the moment where you met your now husband? Wow. We were, I was at the same church that I was at, mm -hmm. and their church came over to visit. And one of the guys that sing in the choir, mm -hmm worked at the post office with my husband, with mm. my now husband. Mm -hmm. and he said, I want, some, I want you to meet somebody. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm done. Not today. Nah, mm -hmm. I'm done. I said, is it preaching? He said, no. I'm like, okay. I said, no, mm -mm, I'm good. He said, well, he's coming to church this afternoon. I'm like, I don't care. He said, Jackie, just, just meet him. Y'all got so much in common. Both of you guys are both just recently divorced. You both got a son. I'm like, I don't care. I won't meet nobody. And then that afternoon service, I saw my now husband. <laughs> uh, we met and he was very quiet he's still very quiet mm. um, he came in and I'm like he ain't my type mm. I don't want that 
<laughs> but we did go. So, so the next time, so we exchanged phone numbers. Mm -hmm. And the first day we went out was his birthday, mm -hmm. April 23rd. <laughs> and uh, I took him out. I took him out for mm -hmm. his birthday. He said, I've never had a woman take me out. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? This is crazy. I took him out to a place called, uh, um, I can't think of the name of it. It's okay. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I took him out. It was a very nice place. And, but before then, my, my girlfriends had told me, said, yeah, you're still dressing like a preacher's wife. We need to get you fixed up. We got my hair braided. We got some more clothes. You know, I'm still wearing dresses down here. You know, <laughs> uh, so I went. We went out, and that whole night he just kept staring. I'm just staring at. You know, I felt like something. Something on my, you know, my face. Yeah. <laughs> and he he said, "You look different." I said, "Oh, okay." I don't know. And it was that night. He said, "I don't know. Something, something's different about you." I'm like, okay. Whatever. The next night we talked all night long. Mm -hmm. The next night, the next, and the next. Six months later, we got married August thirtieth on my birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Like so, did that? Okay, how do I phrase this question? Did your past ever intervene with? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Can't a little bit about the very that. first time he put his arms around me, I, I jumped. Wow. Yeah, because I wasn't. I'm used to. Whenever men come around, the me. arm is coming. It's yeah, you know how preach, how how you come come to church mm -hmm. and you hug. I I wasn't doing that. I was mm -hmm. doing this. I wouldn't let any man touch me for a long time. So when he did that, and this is my husband, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, he said, Jackie. He said, I would never hurt you. I said, I heard that before though. Mm -hmm. I trusted him. I did. I knew he was a gentle man. And what got me, what how what I fell in love with, is that I went up to his house. We getting ready to go out for a date. And I was sitting in his, in his in his own house. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. He had his own house, his own car. And I saw him. He said, "Give me about five minutes. I'll be ready to go." So I'm sitting in the in the den, in the dining room, and he's sitting at the kitchen table, writing out bills. He said, like, "Oh God, they pay bills." <laughs> I had never <laughs> seen a man pay bills. Mm. He looked at me. He said, "What's?" I said, "I mean, I mean, I'm almost crying. Like, Lord, this mm -hmm. is the one." Hmm. And to this day, this man pays bills like it's crazy. I mean, something was to, uh, like the bill come today, it's paid today. Hmm. He don't believe in that late stuff, hmm. you know. And I've never had a man that, that does that. So that's when I knew I had the right one. Hmm. Don't get me wrong. We argue, we fuss and fight. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not really fussing and fight, but we argue. Hmm. We have our ups and downs. But we've never gone to bed angry. And we never will. Mm. I love it. Yeah. And one thing I love about your story is like when we're talking, you mentioned that um, Mr. Robert, you guys dated for six months, mm -hmm. married, mm -hmm. 18 years of yes. marriage. Now. Yes. Like that's, it's like, it yes. was like God is like showing you the cycle is broken. Exactly. Like, oh my God. The same man, no, no, the same, the man you married now, six months six into months. it, you got married. And, and I was very afraid today. of that. I'm like, it's not going to work. It's too soon. Oh God. It's been the done that. But I knew. And now you guys have been married 18 years to God. So yeah. I'm like, don't worry about that, Jackie. Yeah. And one thing I want to also like highlight on is the fact that you said so many people told you you were a preacher's wife. Mm -hmm. So that was in your head. Oh, it I'm was. A preacher's wife. I'm going to marry me a preacher. Yeah. So when you saw him being a preacher, it kind of just clicked for you. Mm -hmm. God didn't tell you himself. Nope. People were telling you. Right. And the day of the marriage, you heard God saying, mm -hmm. don't do it. Exactly. But the voices out there were, it was so strong, mm. like, because it was a multitude of people, yeah. it wasn't one person saying it. Yes. But did you ever have that experience with um, your now husband where a lot of people telling you, oh, that's your husband, that's your husband, or was it more of a personal thing with God? When I met him, when mm -hmm. I knew he was the right one? When meeting him, to knew he was the right one, like, that whole time? I knew it was God that was telling me that he's the one. How did he tell, how did you, apart from, it, like, writing a bill? <laughs> well, okay, <laughs> so when... When he, it was the way that he treated my son. Mm, okay. That was, I was still trying to get child support mm. from, from my, from my ex. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me, he said, Jackie, don't do that. So you're going to, you're going to worry yourself to mm. death. And he still ain't going to pay. He said, I got you mm. and I got your son. Period point blank. What? He said, I said, no. He said, no, he's going to pay. Jackie, let it go. Mm. I got this. And he's been doing that since then. My son today still calls him dad. Oh, I love it. Yeah. The reason why I ask that question is because we forget that when it comes to um, this life decision, yeah. that it's a 
personal thing with God. Absolutely. You can have 10,000 people tell you, oh, that's your husband. Right. But God don't tell you. Right. That is your husband. Right. But it's easy mm -hmm. to hear it and to see things and believe it and then to jump into it. Oh, yeah. And it's very common nowadays. Yes, like, it is. Like, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in, like, my mid-20s, so, yeah. like, I have to be very careful about, like, what I hear around mm -hmm. surrounding my marriage in the future. Right. It has to be interpersonal thing, like, Absolutely. with you and God. I want to suggest highlight that. Don't move. Moment. And so God tells you to. Don't move. It's, your mom can say it, but don't, don't move. move. Your daddy can right. say don't move. <laughs> right. Right. He can say, the right. man can tell you, exactly. but don't move. Exactly. Well, I think he did tell you, oh, God told me you're mm -hmm. my wife. He did. And but he never told me. Mm. And if we listen to God, mm. that's the thing. We don't listen. And the Bible tells us that we have not because we ask not. And when mm. we do ask, we don't believe it. Mm. But everything, that, and since then, God has let, allowed me to birth this amazing uh, nonprofit called Chosen Outreach Ministries. Mm. And it's because I got to give back. Mm. Because when I see a woman, it's something about her. I know that she's been through mm. something. It's just something about her. Mm. I don't go up to her and say, girl, you know, you better stop doing it. I'm just, mm. here, here's my card. Mm. And on my card, on the back of it, it has all of what my nonprofit will do. Mm. You need help. Here it is. Because I know how it is. Especially when, because they, there are signs, you know, the sign that, that I didn't see was the, was the jealousy of, of me being who I am. Mm. Of me playing and people giving me accolades instead of him. Mm. I didn't see those signs at first. Mm. I didn't see the signs of him moving me away from anything that I owned. Anything that I knew. Mm. It's what they do. They isolate you mm. into, and then you're stuck. If you have nobody you know, 11, 100 miles away from your closest relative, mm. who are you going to call? That's and then true. his mom and daddy didn't, didn't. And then I learned something I learned about his mama, too, mm. that she had been abused. The father abused her. Mm. So that's why she didn't say anything. It was normal to it her. It was normal to her. It was normal. Yeah. He seen them fight to the point where the father pulled a gun out on him and tried to shoot him. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know him. But I felt like I knew Kevin. I knew intimate things about Kevin that I never knew about Robert. Mm. All I knew about Robert was that he was a preacher and that he, he, he could direct and he sings and he writes music. Mm. I did that. I didn't know him. I knew a whole lot more about this man than I ever knew about my ex. Mm. If I had just listened. Wow. I and can't blame God. That was, it was all Jackie. Yeah. Yeah. I want to blame God. Like, you did this to me. You know, like, like Adam said, mm -hmm. this woman you gave me? Mm -hmm. Nah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was all me. Wanting what I thought I wanted. But out of this story, though, came the book, came yeah. an organization, yeah. came your show, mm -hmm. something that is helpful to a lot of people. Praise God. It's not that God allowed this because you mm -hmm. made your choice. It's not like God yeah. allowed it. It's like, oh, I'm going to use her story. Absolutely. Because now you mentioned how when you see a long, young lady, you can easily like see this mm -hmm. woman needs help. Yes, and then cannot be that hand yes. for them. Absolutely. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about your organizations now. Okay. So your book, mm -hmm. Abuse Not Broken. Yes. When did that come out? What was the response that you got from Ooh, it? 2017 mm -hmm. is when that came out. Um, the response I first got, was, oh my God, Jackie, I didn't know. Mm. I didn't know, Jackie, that you was, go you was going through all that. I was like, you, what you mean you didn't know? Mm. <laughs> you crazy, you didn't know. Mm. But one of his best friends last year came up to me because I was on another show and I was telling, telling the same thing and she knew who I was married to because she was one of his best friends. Mm. And I knew her, but she didn't really know me. We didn't really talk. And we saw each other at a wedding, or at a party. Mm. Uh, was, some oldest lady's party. And so she asked her, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm like, sure. So she started crying. She said, I am so sorry. I did not know you went through all that. She said, I heard you say many times on that show, I had nobody else to turn to. Mm. She said, I am so sorry that you didn't know that you could have come to me. She said, Cause I, me and Robert are friends, but I don't play with him like that. She said, if I had known that, she said, I would have kicked his butt myself. Mm. And she's, you know, she's a larger lady. So I, I just didn't know. And she said, please forgive me. So that alone, I thought, I thought the lady hated me. And I, mm -hmm. so that alone, her coming to me just made, just made it, made it even better to realize that, hey, yeah, maybe it's something, it's something that somebody else can see mm. that, I don't know. I was just thankful that, that she came to me and said mm -hmm. that. You know, a lot of people to see mm -hmm. what was going on behind yeah. closed doors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's opened up many, many, many doors to, to walk mm -hmm. through and to show people 
that domestic violence happens and that mm -hmm. I told my pastor, this pastor here, I said, how many women do you think is in your congregation that have gone through domestic violence? Hmm. And he's like, Jack, I never thought about it. Oh, wow. I said, exactly. That's our problem. We don't think about it. I said, I know 12 personally. Hmm. So when are you going to start a domestic violence program here? We're getting it together now. Wow. It's, it's needed. We need this. Definitely. Yeah. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. and then <laughs> your story is just I'm I'm I can't even speak, but yeah. <laughs> I have to. Um, so now we have the um, nonprofit as yes. well. Praise God! Um, let's talk a little bit about that as well. The nonprofit um, started out um, helping women who have gone through domestic violence. Because I remember when I when I when I left, I, said I had nothing. I stayed with a girlfriend of mine for a couple of weeks, and I got my own place. Mm -hmm. I remember leaving, not having anything. So mm -hmm. this nonprofit allows women to leave. Mm -hmm. We'll find them help. Mm -hmm. And these, we find some guys that that's a part of this organization. I can't tell you name because they mm -hmm. don't want, mm -hmm. but they'll, they'll move you a woman out with, within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, and they normally do that when the, when the, the husband is gone, they'll, mm -hmm. you call them and say, boom, he's gone. And they'll get somebody, you know, we already have this set up. We're going to come mm -hmm. this day and they'll move them out. And it helps them. We have a bag called Hope Bag. Mm -hmm. And it's like a suitcase like that you can run with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it, inside of the suitcase, it has clothes. It has uh, shoes, gym shoes. It has a couple of outfits. For, you know, it has toiletries. Uh, it also has numbers for help. Mm -hmm. Organizations that will help you. Fight. It'll give you, I think, $200 uh, inside there for each bag. And we can't do it every day, but we try to do as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And God have blessed me, has blessed me to get a couple of brands. Mm. That has also helped to purchase these bags, mm. and so when somebody calls me, or not, and it's not just for women who domestic violence; it's also for women and well, men. I said not men, but women who are getting out of out of out of jail, mm. reentry, mm -hmm. and they don't have anything. Mm. So it helps in the same bags, and we have issues with them. We have uh, same clothes, same toiletries, but inside their their resources mm. are jobs that that hire felons. Uh, vice versa, uh, mm -hmm. places that you can go go stay here, mm -hmm. you know, money for. If we need to, we'll fly them back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, to where they need to go. We'll give them tickets for here, or, you know, wow. or whatever. Yeah, that's wow. what it's about. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, how can they Absolutely. reach out to you? Um, there's a website called uh, Chosen Outreach Ministries, just through Chosen Outreach, Outreach Ministries org, mm -hmm. uh, Or you can call me 937-241-0965. Mm -hmm. Or you can also reach me at Testimonies Praise 411 at Gmail. Mm. Or just just Google Jackie. I'm mm -hmm. also on Facebook as well. So reach out to me any way they can. We'll try to get them back. Perfect. You mentioned Testimony Praise, yes. which is your show that you Absolutely. have. Yes. Let's talk about that a little bit more. So you're the host. Wow, well, I am the host of Testimonies Praise. Mm -hmm. uh, that just came up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my friends were, were at um, you know at home because of COVID. And couldn't go anywhere. And I have a lot of friends that sing. So I'm like, you know what? I have this Zoom platform. Let's, I, when I first thought, I know what I was doing. I said, well, let's just have people coming on. So mm -hmm. we started that. I had 13 people the first time. Mm -hmm. They came on singing or doing a poem or whatever. And God blessed that. It's mm -hmm. been two years now. It's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm still doing it. And then God blessed me to be a part of this uh, Roku Mm -hmm. um, show it's on. It's called All Nations TV. Mm -hmm. He called about about a year and a half ago, and and said he wanted wanted the show to be a part of of his network. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know. Mm -hmm. So I just know God. Just trust him. That's I just trust God. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing. So the last thing I'm gonna stop <laughs> feeding into all of this. Yeah. The last thing I really want us to um, talk about is advice oh wow you're seeing a young lady mm -hmm. that was where you're at before yeah what would you tell that young lady the first thing i would tell her i first asked her is she safe mm. do you want help because a lot of times you can't force yeah the help yeah i would first the first thing i normally do is give them my card mm. on the card on the back of it it, it, it tells you what what's you know what who i am how to get in contact with me, if mm -hmm. you need this, you need that. And then I'll, and if she's receptive to that, mm -hmm. then I'm, I ask her, are you safe? Mm -hmm. And I'll mouth it off. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell her, put that card in your shoe. Mm -hmm. Why the shoe? That's the last thing a man normally looks at. Mm -hmm. It's your shoe or your sock. That way, and then if she calls me and wants advice, I'll give her what I, what she's able to accept. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people can't leave. 
People ask me, why did you stay? Why did you stay? I, 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 don't, I don't even know. I, I, I just believe that I stayed so I can be, so people can understand what it is to go through domestic violence. And then often, to oftentimes I also realize that I was beaten to, into submission. Hmm. That once they keep putting their hands on you, they own you. Because mm. they beat you once, they're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many times they say, I'm sorry. It's going to happen again. Until you do something. Until you call the cops and something about it, but don't wait too late before. Because I've had young women that have lost their life because, because of this. this. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay, I said last question, but I have one more. <laughs> I have one more. Yeah. So we're looking at, um, let's say, 16 year old Jackie. Mm. You're looking at her right now. Mm. What would you tell her? Wow. I would tell her what my mama told me. Mm. Don't take no wooden nickels. Mm. And I didn't know what that meant. Like, what is she talking about? Mm. A wood nickel is fake. That's fake to yourself. Be true to who you are. Mm. Realize that you are queen. Mm. That your purse, your pocketbook, as we call it, mm -hmm. ain't talking about a pocketbook. Mm -hmm. That thing that we sit on is precious. And you don't give it to just anybody. And if he doesn't respect you at home, doesn't respect you in front of people, go, leave. It's okay. God will provide for you. You don't have to worry about that. I wish I had told myself that. I wish I wasn't running so much to try to get away from the pain that I was in. Mm -hmm. I was in so much pain. Not, not having kids. Come on now. I felt, I felt less than a woman. Like, okay, God, you put me on this earth. What am I supposed to do? Hmm. I can't have kids. What am I supposed to do? You said be fruitful and multiply. How can I do that? But ever since then, God has given me. When I say I have three young women that I call my daughter. Hmm. And we're very close. I didn't birth them. And I have three young men that call me mama. Hmm. And I didn't birth them either. So God will give you everything that you need. It's, it's, it's just believing and trusting God, even at 16. I was at church. I was playing church. So now I know mm -hmm. the real God. I love that. I love that. Miss Jackie, whew, thank you. You're welcome. I feel I don't I feel like I owe you so you much. Owe me like you have definitely blessed me with your story. Every time you say it, mm. it touches my heart. That's good. This is my third time like knowing <laughs> your story. Right. And I feel even more empowered. Mm. I feel more of like, girl, you got this. Yeah. If she can do it, you can do it. Absolutely. I'm not saying I'm like I'm going no, through what you're going through, but right. even the smallest things, mm -hmm. like if she was able to go through that and yeah. be who she is today, you got nothing can stop you. Praise God. God gonna give you everything he needs. Like Absolutely. everything you just said, I just took it upon myself. Mm. And I pray and hope that like somebody watching this can also have that same experience because that's the whole point of this to yeah. see that you can also be a queen you can also be a diamond even Absolutely. though you're going through the refining seasons Amen. and you are obviously a diamond Amen. you are beautiful praise god and i don't want to get emotional but <laughs> i'm gonna i want to stop <laughs> talking and just say thank you you're welcome and i pray that um this blessed you blessed me and bless everybody else that's watching this i'm just so thankful for you even reach out to me thank you very much for coming down oh. here and be <laughs> a part of your amazing show thank you i just bless god and god keeps blessing you thank you thank you, thank you. you're welcome <laughs>